I'm not sure what was their issue. What, what do you feel like their issue was, Guns? They didn't go to their normal drafts. I mean, I was casting with Lumi in the last game. We were like, well, is Spirit going to pull out their normal like death push strategies with like the Lycan and stuff? And Lumi and I just looked at it and was like, have they even really been doing that this tournament? It didn't feel like they've been running the same strategies that got them wins during the major qualifiers, where they just go for these cheesier, the Chens, the Lycans, the like Death Prophet, Lone Druids, all this, and just kind of... I mean, they're, they're cheesy strats, but they're strats that work for them. They're, they're the right. go black drafts, and I don't feel like they went. They did like the like the half ass go black draft. They had like their last game a death prophet, but then they picked up the gyrocopter and right. had something with a faceless void. They never ran faceless void before, so I felt like they were just all over the place with their picks and didn't have the same level of confidence that they had in the majors. Yeah, it seems like there's like two different types of goblack. There's online qualifier goblack who has no fear. <laughs> is willing to just you know throw everything at them, and then there's land qualifier goblack that try to like tries to play a bit too safe, and that is not their strength. So well, they have some time to uh, to adjust. They of course qualified for the major. I believe they qualified for MDL as well. So mm -hmm. uh, they will play a lot more matches on this patch, and they have nothing to fear. Unlike. Yeah. For example, uh, Navi, which we pointed out. But let's let's not talk about Group A anymore because Group A is done. Uh, group B is what it's all about. We have six more games left today in Group B and a lot to be decided. It is almost certain that Liquid will move on to the first... or They will definitely move on to the next phase, but they will also want to make it to the first slot. Yep. And uh, be seeded directly into the semifinals. And they can do that with the next game. The next game on mainstream is going to be Wings against Team Liquid. So, number one against number six here. <laughs> um, but They're tied uh, for six. V VP could still get Any first. If VP yes. win all their games today, then they get first because right. they face Liquid. So, they, they would win their head to head. <clears throat> So they, yeah. they, that's the more important game for Liquid today is all they've got to do to get first is beat VP. Uh -huh. This game, I guess, matters less for them, but like you say, they, you don't want to lose both your games today. No, a VP is playing against Wings uh, in, in okay. a team that they should know yeah. quite heavily. I think if we're talking about what we, we just came up talking about disappointments in Group A, let's talk about disappointments in Group B, you know, fun topics here on the panel. <laughs> disappointments in Group B for me, Team Secret. Totally yeah. agree. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Even their win, the they, sh they shouldn't have won. It yeah. felt like like VP. Well, had some of their, their losses number. they shouldn't have lost. Uh, the which Vega one? game, no, the they, Vega they, game they, was pretty rough. Yeah, I don't know. I think both teams played kind of bad in that Vega Secret game. Yeah. I think more than anything, the Secret games they haven't showed, shown good Dota. Like they, okay. it, it's not the team Secret that did that would play that like played at the last major right. that's played over the last few months has been winning land competitions, winning MLGs, right. uh, winning Nanyang. This is just like it. It looks like Secret's lost a bit of their mojo. I don't, I don't think you can pinpoint the drafts by any means. I don't think you can pinpoint any one player. It's just not clicking as well as it used to. Right. And they, uh, they lost against Vega, which I feel like would be the team that they would <coughs> need to beat in order to, to get third place. Because right now, first place for them, it's kind of, for me, not really all that possible. Secret is still facing complexity as well as Wings. Two teams that, in theory, they should yeah. beat. It's, it's, it's like but it reads easy. But even if they beat those, if, if Vega does well against Virtus Pro, they're not going to make I it. Know, I think there's still a room for some upsets there. Like yeah. I, I, I still think Complexity has a potential to beat both of those teams. Like I think every, I wouldn't be surprised oh, if any... Complexity? I think they have a chance. <laughs> Dude, Dude Ve Vega beats Secret. I only play yeah. Complexity because I know Swindles won't care. Like he's, Dude, he's Vega, <laughs> Vega, is, Vega is not playing that well, and yeah. they beat Secret. I think any of those bottom four teams can beat any of the other four wings, teams. Wings, man. you got to believe in Wings. Wings are going to take... They took 2-0 Secret in WCA. They did. They get the Coddle, the Ice Ice Coddle. I reckon they can... I mean, I, I really like Wings, but yeah. they need... Their itemization has been questionable this tournament. Okay, I haven't seen them play this this they, tournament. I just seen them, I saw them play in the qualifiers, even though they didn't make it out. I'm just like, this is this is a, such a fun team. They played against Complexity. Uh, Chessie went a full combo Invoker like Yules, Aghanim yep. Scepter, Blink, and Shadow was pretty farmed on Warfling and still didn't get a BKB and was getting like one shot by the combo. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Okay. Um, when I talked to Swindles about it this morning, he was like, you know, good. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's. It's weird because wings are so good at certain areas of the game, and then in other words, in other ones, they get kind of overconfident about their their kind of China pub mentality. Yeah. But I think sometimes it can work for them because they kind of play unexpectedly and like surprisingly aggressive for a Chinese team. But we'll see how they pull it out. I think they have a chance, but I, I do favor complexity more in the matchup, though. Yeah, with still a lot of uh, matches to go, if you want to be kept up to date with everything that is happening in these games, you can get yourself the Score Esports app, where you can find all the statistics of the heroes of the players, of which item build they went for, which skill weight they went for, everything you can think of, including news articles as well. Uh, get yourself the Score Esports app on Google Play or iOS App Store. Definitely an app wor worth getting. And 
uh, with Group B, on the second stream, uh, we're going to be having Complexity taking on Team Vega right now. will be casted by the Asian duo, uh, Winter and Lumi. And you can find that on the, the second stream, and that is on uh, the Twitch platform, of course, as well. World's finest live streaming platform on uh, Dota Starlet underscore EN2. So there's that. But uh, I want to quickly, before we continue talking about uh, uh, sorry, Vega versus Wings, because that's the match that mm -hmm. we're going to watch, I want to quickly talk about complexity and uh, Vega. Um, I want to hear what you think is uh, going to happen there. Ooh. I, I mean, I think Vega's, I, I've, I feel Vega, despite not playing too well yesterday, I think they're going to be the, the team I'd favor going in. I, I, I haven't gotten to see like any of Vega. Yeah. None of their games have been on I the I just saw the like, secret what, game. But so yeah, what, what, like, what are they bringing to the table I right mean, now? It's the same old Vega mostly. Okay. It's like the Vega that, like, when they're on their good, then on their good days, they look like the Vega that won ESL One New York, which hasn't really right. adapted necessarily that much to the new patch, but mm -hmm. they're still solid. They play really well together as a team. Um, you've got the some big threats like the the Broodmother, which is just one of their mm -hmm. kind of staple offlane threats, which right. you've always got to worry about for Mag. So I think they have, like, the hero pull to kind of cause complexity some problems, but. Okay. I think from an overall draft point of view, Complexity is maybe more going to have the better strategies coming in, but right. I think Vega as a team can outplay them. I think Complexity is one of the teams that benefits most, though, from playing more games. Uh, like I said, I was talking okay. to Swindle a little bit this morning, and he said that they've had a, a hard time getting adjusted to this patch because they've had their, all of their Euros moved to America. Like, they got up and they actually are living in Florida all together in a all team of their house. players. And so yes. that process took a lot of time for them. They weren't able to play as many pub games. They're not as familiar with a lot of their heroes. And I think the more complexity plays on this patch, the more you'll see out of them. I think a lot of the players on their team have a, a very high skill ceiling. We saw their talent like from the, the European guys, especially yeah. Chessy and Limp and Hanskin are very talented players. And the I think NA Z3, guys, not so much. I, I understand, Brian. <laughs> no, <laughs> I see what you're saying. No, no, I agree as well. <laughs> no, Sw Swindles is a fantastic captain. Like, yeah, fantastic yeah, no, no. at leading a team. I mean, He's he, invaluable to that team. Yes, yeah. exactly. They got very far at TI5. Like No one expected them to get that far, and I think a lot of that has to do with how firm of a leader Sw Swindle is. And Z Freak is also a very underrated support player in terms of his raw talent. So I, th I could see Complexity doing pretty well today. I, I think you could see Complexity doing very well in the entire tournament. Maybe slightly ahead. He's, 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 he's been all about the Complexity <laughs> yeah. hype train, which is I'm yeah. not, no, I'm yet not on, to leave the I'm station. not on the mega Complexity hype train. <laughs> no, no. I just think that they, the more that they play, the better they will yeah, do. Yeah. Like, I think they just need some more time on the You've patch. got your Complexity. I've got my wings. End of the day, we're both going to be sadly disappointed. Sad. We're gonna, we're ni just, neither of them is going to be in the yeah, top three. It's going to be, yeah. it's gonna be liquid... Uh, liquid V VP in secret or something. As, as sad as I am for you guys, I feel like you're, you're going to be having the right of it there. But uh, everything yeah. can still happen because they have the same scenario as no. Group A where mm. there's just a lot of tiebreaker possibilities. No. Uh, for us, uh, we're going to focus on our Wings versus Team Liquid. Now, okay, gods, Wings, yeah. this is your time. Go! Wings, they're, they're a fun team to look out for. They love the coddle pick. That's always, like to me, one of the big go-tos that they can just pull out of nowhere and they play it very differently. They'll contest the off lane. They mm. they seem to have adapted very quickly to the new patch, using a lot of the new like pool camps that are, are available to them. They play a different style of off lane as well, where they're going prioritizing the iron talent a lot more. Right. I mean, it's kind of becoming more of a common thing. But I think they were one of the first teams to catch on to that. Mm. Uh, they run a lot of junglers. They'll play the Chen, which I mean, most teams I feel like you've got to be able to play Chen now. It's one yeah, of the top heroes uh, in the game. So. Wings can be very disruptive in a team like Liquid who wants to play like a more methodical, objective-based game where they just want to kind of sit back, get their space to farm. I mean, Liquid, okay, Liquid to me have two styles. They have the sit back, get their farm, play it slow, win the game, they like him, or they have the kind of push and you in 20, 25 minutes with Death Profit. So if yeah. they get Death Profit, you're looking at a different Liquid. If they don't, then you're looking at the standard yeah. Fata Razor type of Liquid. I mean, I like Wings too, but I think that uh, Liquid are on an absolute tear. Like they're looking yeah. like the best team in the tournament right now. Um, Matuma oh, for Man, LGD? I, I think so. I mean, LGD had a rough day today. <laughs> they they lost to Alliance, which is a game they should not have lost. They beat Navi. They, they crushed Navi. <laughs> they crushed Navi, but like Navi is not playing what very mean, well. I, I don't think you can talk. No, I feel like talking I, about LGD versus Alliance is like talking about like WCA. Like that's true. That matters. It's, yeah, it's fair just, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But I, I still think Liquid's wins were probably more convincing than even LGD's wins. Okay, you, you can say that. I, uh, I think that's Matuma fair. Man is playing out of his mind. Like, mm -hmm. Fada is being able to get, like, his heroes are really good right now. Like, Ray, everyone's trying to pick, like, these lane dominators in mid, and Fada just picks Razor and wins his lane. Yeah. Or he picks 
well, you know, picks Viper and just wins his the lane. The scary thing is they've shown they don't just play that slow-paced farm game. They can do the death they can profit, do win 20, 25 minutes. Exactly. The Tumber Man also plays an insane lone druid, so even if mm -hmm. they don't get the death profit, I think they would probably have some other fast-paced push strats that don't involve death and profit. We, and both of you didn't even mention Jerex yet. And yeah, you, you're having you know, to ban out either Earth Spirit or Tesk almost every single game. Yeah, like, he's playing those are those Yeah, you bet you're gonna ban that's one thing I don't like. Teams aren't banning both. If you're banning Earth Spirit, you're wasting a ban unless you ban Tusk as well. That's my Agreed. theory on it. I would agree. I think his Tusk is in he's probably like one of the, the best Tusk player in Europe. What's what's the point of banning Earth Spirit if you're giving him Tusk? Like, <laughs> it frustrates me. I, like I I've seen him make so many big plays on Tusk and just seen him just turn team fights on his own right. as Tusk that I'm just like, yes, his Earth Spirit also the best in Europe. He happens to be right. the best Earth Spirit and Tusk in Europe. Either you ban both or you ban neither. Because yeah. otherwise you're wasting a ban. And Which then, one would you go for? Ban both. You would ban both. Uh, oh, it depends. I, I, I would try both. I, I'd be open to trying both. Because I think if you... If you leave both in the pool, you can get like a Chen or something mm. like you can get a big pick in return. So I think there is merit in leaving both in the pool and yeah. dealing with an Earth Spirit. I think that just shows how important it is to have these heroes that are like so signature for you that other teams are really scared about leaving them in. Mm -hmm. Because then it allows these like top tier meta heroes to stick around. When heroes that are really good in the meta but not like first band material like Tusk for a lot of teams are first band material when you're playing against a team like Liquid. It allows their cores to get their core heroes. It allows Kuroki to pick whatever support he feels like works in the situation. It just really works for them, and it makes Liquid very hard to draft against. So Team Liquid, is there anything you feel like, because so far Team Liquid has basically focused on their own gameplay, mm -hmm. did their own plan, and has been working out real great. Now they are in the same scenario as LGD, Almost, as LGD was this morning, right. so they've got two games mm -hmm. uh, guaranteed already top three, still want to make it obviously to the If they lose right. both, can they, can they get knocked like in tiebreakers maybe? Is that possible? Because like, there could be like a few other teams who could end 3-2. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure if they We'd lose both, you, they could be in like a tie tiebreaker scenario to go yeah, through. Yeah, but they've, but they've beaten all of those lower teams, I yeah. think. Yeah, but then they would have lost to... They might 1-1-1, one, 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 yeah, but yeah, I don't know. It's complicated. I, we'll I, see when we get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's I don't too think, many trees. I don't think it's guaranteed top three yet. They could be tiebreakers. They could be 3-2. Uh, but that w if they are 3-2, they they're both. guaranteed top three. Okay. I think Because nobody else, like, other people can get 3-2, but there's not three other teams that can get 3-2 because they're all facing each other. Possibly. Possibly. I'm not completely sure. I'm unconvinced. Let's not, do, let's not do the math <laughs> right, yeah. right now. We, we can find out. I mean, on paper, Team Liquid should be able to, to yeah. win against Wings, uh, something mm -hmm. that obviously might throw them off guard, perhaps a couple. Do you think that's enough? Do you think that we Wings has it in them to actually... Throw Liquid off their game because so far nobody's been able to do um, that. I'm not. I'm not sure who. If there's, if there's a team in this group who who can throw them off, I think it's it's Wings. Um, I think they had a good plan going against like Seeker. They crushed them in 20 minutes. But I think Wings, being a team they're not comfortable with, they haven't versed before. Uh, they're an Eastern team who they just have never really played against outside of maybe. <laughs> did they meet at WC? WCA, oh yeah, they, of course they met in WCA. Mm -hmm. They played in the. They, okay, so Liquid 3 0 Wings at WCA. So. Uh, um, 3 0 <laughs> Oof. Yeah, so uh, may, uh, look, Wings want revenge for that 3-0. That's, that's how okay. I look at this. That was, that was the third place that's to sign way, That's a good way to spin it, guys. Good <laughs> Let, job. Let's uh, find out if they get yeah. the revenge, because we, we can actually continue to talk about it, but uh, we are in the draft, so we can find out what the teams have. By the way, I, I kind of want to take back that I feel like Liquid is in the same position as LGD, because uh, LGD already had fa faced EG, which was the second of the group uh, this morning, while Liquid still has to face yeah. Virtus Pro later today, which is uh, going to be a match to watch out for. It's really? going to be a match after this one, actually, on, the, on this stream. Uh, but first, it is time for Liquid to face Team Wings, and it is Liquid to ban out Earth Spirit. Maybe Wings takes the test. Yeah. Uh, if, if if Liquid bans out Earth Spirit, obviously. Uh, you want you might want Chen. I, th I think it's uh, it's a good chance they take Chen here as well, or okay. like Avenge, but. I think giving away Chen plus Tusk is Ten very bad. Uh, is it that bad? You know, Tusk, Tusk is a support when you've got Chen isn't amazing. So right. we'll see. Io's the other hero that's still in the pool as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty open hero pool as far as what's left right now. The Invoker first stage ban for Wings, I think it's kind of a bit of a throwaway ban. It's not saying Liquid have been prioritizing in the first stage, but because they had first pick, they say let's just ban out like a possible second pick type hero. They, uh, Wings had a game against Vega yesterday where Blink played Batrider and completely destroyed Vega. Yeah. So really um, game Liquid yeah. did do their homework and it is indeed a Chen first pick, so if Liquid wants to, they can secure themselves. I, mean, I don't know why it's taking this long and they're just going to get Tusk. Tusk. Unless they have a crazy yeah. something else they're trying to well, try. Well, they're, they're deciding their second pick because you want to yeah. like, pick them together so the timer goes over to Wings. Like, 
Generally I'm speaking, if you pick one hero, you give your opponents info that they can then think about, and it's mm. still on your timer. That's a good point. Remaining. But um, it's either Tusk Death Prophet or Tusk Razor here. Because they're Dire Side, they Reserve sometimes time. go Razor. I think if they're Radiant, they go Death Prophet. But the Dire Jungle just really favors the Razor. You mm. farm really efficiently, and uh, it's like it's a comfort zone for Liquid. Yeah. So if I they, if they want to go for a stable comfort zone. Dire's really strong right now. Across the tusk here, though. Whoa, they're not going to go get the tusk. They go different. They they have a different plan. They no say tusk, no death prophet, no razor, no viper even. And no mind viper. control doxy, that's like a his, best, really his at, actual best. Hero. At the same time, you can't ban them all out, so some of them will be in the pool yeah. still at the second phase. Jarek bounty. It's been. We're actually going through the heroes he's played yesterday. I when I was yeah, when I was yeah, casting with Owen, and I'm looking through we, we looked through Dota buff, and it was five pages back. Mm -hmm. None of his 80 recent games had a bounty hunter, but there was one bounty in his last 100 <laughs> games. Because Twitch, I was like, "Hey, he's played bounty hunter," but you know, uh, and like we don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I don't cool. believe you. And he had one bounty hunter. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is good because Liquid are in a confident position exactly. where I I'm pretty sure they're pretty confident that they're going to move on, so they can try to play something a little bit different, try to make sure that they show different okay. drafts so they're not quite so shoehorned into knowing that they're going to pick either Tusker or Spirit. And no one's really figured out like a good way of dealing and answering the Chen yet, so they're going to try And Liquid were the ones that the banned the Earth Spirit. I guess because Wings had the first pick, yeah. and they, ZRD plays a pretty good Earth Spirit as well in the offline. Yep. So Oracle, as the Doxia pseudo-counter, as well as uh, a good safe lane support for Wings, so they're not revealing any of their core heroes with this opener. Interesting. Why the Oracle here? Just is it just to deal with the Darkseer, just all the purchases? Darkseer, yeah. and he's, like, he's got pretty good starting stats and stuff. Like He doesn't get Ten completely owned by remaining. Bounty Hunter. If you find the Bounty in the jungle with Oracle plus Chen, you can use like the Purge and Five seconds like, remaining. Get, go for a kill, potentially. Would you, would you not be worried that with basically their two supports locked in, Reserve they kind of lack certain control on a set of wings that they have uh. to make up for in their cores? Yeah, absolutely. They have to pick an offlaner that can give them a good initiation as well as control, even maybe a safe laner as well. I mean, it could be any. All three cores, like, you can pick heroes for those roles mm. that give you lockdown that you need. Um, or alternatively, if you're not going for lockdown, you go, like, all out, five-man type push. Team. But we'll see Team Liquid here. They're in a... I feel, I feel like the, as far as the opening for the draft goes, they're in the kind of... They're the ones in, like, the driver's seat as far as dictating play right now. Like, they, right. they force... Like, it's been kind of reactionary with the Oracle pick to the Ducks here. And you see this Darkseid Bounty Hunter, and now it's up to Wings to say, how are we going to deal with this Darkseid Bounty Hunter? If you're Liquid, you're not thinking, how do we deal with the Oracle? How do we deal with the Chen? You've already got the answer to that with your Bounty Pickup. Right. Reserve time. Yeah, for Liquid, perhaps easier to ban out against Wings right now, now that the two supports are... Yeah. You, you just have to ban cores that you don't, don't want to face that would have a chance to disrupt your own mm. gameplay, such as uh, the Morphling. Any other hero that you feel like would... Yeah. Throw a wrench in the works of Liquid? I mean, the carries that can do well against Darkseer, the Gyrocopter always the big one that gets mentioned, although I, the Gyro Oracle lane, like, Anti -mage? I don't know. Anti-Mage could definitely come in. I think Anti-Mage is a scary fourth pick. Just if Liquid don't get heroes that deal well with Anti-Mage and you suddenly pick it up later on, you can cause problems off of that. But Anti-Mage actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Matuma Man's Anti-Mage is... Really good. Oh, well. so we're we'll talking oh. more for, more for talking about more for wings. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think Liquid here. It's eh, you don't want to rush. No one wants to rush into an anti mage with their third pick, most likely. Right. Yeah. I agree. If and anyone does, it's more likely wings. Uh, Sh Shadow's anti mage is, is good too. Yeah. It's not like like if you're a carry player, most carry players will not have to play anti mage. No. <coughs> so Liquid can not going to go pick Tusk with Bounty Five Hunter. They no. They're gonna could go Razor. This is like a, still an okay time to pick up the Razor, but no, the Kuroki Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor, great. This to me is the uh, the first times when I saw like Chen and Chen just get picked up. I was seeing teams pick CM, and everyone forgot about how good Witch Doctor is against against you get the, the creep. full stun direction. Yeah, creeps. full stun duration, and it hits more than one. Like Frostbite, right. you Frostbite one at, during a push. It's like okay, you still got the other ones, but Witch Doctor casts hits the neutral, stuns them for the full duration, and then bounces to heroes. Like it's actually way better, I think, as an answer to Chen, and the hero itself is better in lane. It zones out off lane is better, it contests just the lane in general better, so... Ten seconds remaining. I think this is a very... Oh, previously underpicked here against Chen, Five although we're seeing it more and more. <coughs> we saw it, um, a Witch Doctor, yeah, we saw a Witch Doctor picked up by LGD against the Chen yep. from uh, Artstyle on Navi. That was the game where MMY was going up against a um, Pudge and still went Midas. That's one Witch yeah, Doctor. That's great. <laughs> And it's Jarek, just the, the Darkseer lane encounter, I guess. So they're going to need a secondary carry for mid that has, like, or either the mid or offlane that gives them like some late game as well. Because you can't push with Gyrocopter, and you also can't go late game with 
these three heroes as well. So they needed like a mid who goes late game. But and then does they, well against Razor. Does well against Razor and ideally has some stuns because they've got no stuns. Yeah, so they, yeah. there's a lot of That's criteria to fill for like your one yeah, hero. One, one hero fills all those criteria. How about, how about uh, a Dragon Knight? I mean, you're going to not win the lane, yeah. right? But at least you generally wouldn't lose? It pushes as well. It's Ten not amazing late game, but I think it's like the Chen Dragon Knight that pushes towers really fast. Mm. And also doesn't get pressured much by a bounty hunter yeah. because you're tanky. And mm. kind of grouping up in the mid game is how you deal with the yeah. bounty hunter pick. Any other heroes you could No you wave clear, of? no real team, like not a ton of team fight unless yeah. you're like winning the team fight. <laughs> I think they could just go, for, like if they want to go for like a mid carry, like a Shadow Fiend, they just need to get an offlaner like an Earthshaker or something that yeah. provides all the control and lockdown they need. Would Clockwork but. provide enough control, I think? Uh, it's kind of like a you go in and then you're done. Like you, yeah. you I, I'm not convinced by a Clockwork. Well, they have, uh, they're running out of time actually. This is already the bonus slider. slider. There we go. That's our offlaner then? Yep. Have some control. I wonder what kind of... And they, they want to go for... I mean, this means like all your heroes are doing a bit more physical damage, but none yeah. of those three heroes actually right-click all too much. Like Gyro, it's flak, it's spread damage, so I think they're going to go for like a mid-physical damage core. If they want to go something safe, it's more like the Viper. If they want to go something a bit greedier, they can get in the Shadow Fiend. The TA is just such a bad matchup versus Razor. I don't think that's really playable. Do you feel like Gyrocopter can do okay by himself against the Darkseer and put like the Oracle mid? Not with a Bounty with Hunter in the else? game. No? If Bounty just shows up, you yeah, you just get solo killed. Okay. Well, dual killed. It's not solo kill at that point. But the Chen would still be close by as well. Yeah, you just don't know when Bounty Hunter is going to show up. So like, you can't actually leave the like the AOE of your tower because once you get hit by a Janata, Iron Shell, Bounty Hunter, you're just straight up dead. Okay. So I think it's it's too risky to leave Gyro by himself. Matumba in the Team zone. Matumba actually, he's the other player. player. We haven't talked about his hero too much. Apart from that, he is playing really well this tournament. It's just, yep. it's just solid. What's the last pick for him? Against Jarokov, you've got which you can you can fit in so many different heroes here. Yeah, they haven't got much control and lockdown themselves. Just the cask vacuum, vacuum not exactly something that has much uptime as well. Or is that reliable for a team fight? Oh, well, it's a big team fight wombo combo, really? but. I'm curious Five to see what kind of remaining. extra damage dealer they get. Slark kind of comes to mind, but has a Reserve bit of lockdown time. with the pounce. I don't know, I'm looking around. Like a lot of his normal heroes, like they don't really fit crazy good. Like he's played a lot of like in this patch. I a mean, lot of Ember Dark here is like Ember, a yeah. Ember makes <laughs> sense. But I'll, is Ember combo? is Ember fantastic? This Ember, game? I mean, Oracle instantly gets rid of Flame Guy. If, if, right. if it wasn't yeah. for Oracle, they would have picked Ember. <laughs> Two minutes ago, and like as their fifth, pick, they would have picked Ember right away. But it's yeah. because of Oracle that they're like, "Is it still good? Can we play Ember?" You also got Slaughter, who's good against Ember. Right. Mm. Like they may just say, "Screw it, let's just pick Ember," because the hero just f it fits the liquid draft. It just gets so it gets so hard counted by the wings heroes. Yeah. He'll also pick out an Ursa, but I don't know if this is a very good Ursa game. Sure, Ursa, Ursa seems okay. It's not. I mean, the Chen Creeps are pesky. Medusa. Medusa. Okay. okay. So Medusa has actually been played quite a bit on the on the second stream, but not actually. This is the first time it's picked in the mainstream. Yeah. Nice. The team has played it before. The this match just once. It. Just once. It was in the major qual. I saw the game in the major qualifier, so it must be the game where he pulled it out. Right. They did win that game. It's kind of like a death ball push. They had. I think they had a death prop of Medusa that game. I don't. The Razor doesn't quite push as hard. Snake hurts. Yeah. The new oh, Mystic Snake does. hurts a and lot. <laughs> it bounces off Chen Creeps. That's like a lot of mana mm -hmm. return for the Medusa. So I, I, I think it does pretty well there in that situation. Five and we need remaining. we need some serious damage output. Well, they don't have any time left. Four seconds in their bonus time. And it's going to be a Slark, you who's, mentioned who's it. Who's mid? Gyro mid. Okay. That's actually not a bad mm. solution. To dealing with the Razor, yeah? Yeah. Is this going to be the max rocket build? Oh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> you look different there, Shiva. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, how does the gyro build? Is, is this the max rocket build? Max homing missile, sure. Yeah, it works. A rocket, rocket barrage, uh, but yeah, missile, rocket, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I think you can max homing missile if you want and just yeah. look to control the lane, cause give Fata issues in the laning stage, and then when you get level six cooldown, you can even try and maybe rotate into his jungle, steal his neutral stacks if that's what he's going for. So right. it's, it's a... Cool is it the draft. right the right draft for for wings to take down? Oh, Liquid? I still think Liquid have the better oh, okay. draft. I think it was a good <laughs> way change their last pick, putting the gyro mid and picking up a carry because they needed <coughs> something else. Like there was no mid heroes that would have fit their draft. TA would have been a great pick except for the terrible lane matchup. He would have just got wrecked. So um, I think it was the right move. Although I still favor Liquid. 
Okay, well, we're going to find out if indeed Liquid is going to take this game home and secure themselves the number one spot here in Group B. It is time for the game. Let's go. Thank you very much, Shiver. Um, LD joined here by Scant. Scant, our first ever cast together. Yep. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good one. Excited to see the South African flavor. Do you have like a signature move or phrase that you're going to bring to the cast? I don't know. I'm sure the chat will tell me after the tournament, but I'm not aware of a, a signature phrase that I have. I'm sure they'll make something up. Yeah. For now, apparently, you're Purge Light. So. Okay, Purge Light. That, I think that's a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's better than calling it an insult. You might get some angry <laughs> fanboys after you. But what do you, what do you think about the draft here overall? Do you agree with the analyst evaluation that it's just a clear win for Liquid, or do you think it's a little more even? I mean, yeah, Liquid look really good. I, th I think I agree with that. So I, I think that it makes sense to pick up the slark because Gyrocopter was just not going to win that fight later on against Medusa and Razor. But now there's a mid gyro and we're going to have to see how that, uh, how that goes. You can see Liquid uh, chatting a bit. I think they may be ch talking to the admin. Not entirely sure, but team's getting ready here. Wings, this is a must win for them. But, you know, the thing that I found really interesting was I didn't realize just how ridiculous Liquid's win rate on this patch is 23-5. and five. That is... Now, I know you, you originally have a Statsman background. Like, of course, it's not the biggest sample size, but I feel like 28 games is enough to say this team is really doing well in this patch. Yeah, they're doing very well. And whether or not, I mean, we could say that they, did, they weren't always playing against the best teams in those right, games. Right, the competition was. But, but it's still important because they got the momentum. And we noticed that when we talk about how Liquid and LGD weren't invited to the, quali to the, the major, they both went through qualifiers, and then they come to this tournament, they look so strong. A lot of that's to do with the fact that they went through the qualifiers. They got those extra games in, so they, they're much more experienced on the patch. They've got a better idea of how they want to play. And they're comfortable. They, yeah. they have their way of playing. There is a little more footage on them that can be the downside sometimes, is if you know another team is able to break down your style. But it seems like they have enough options with their drafts that they're able to mix it up when, you know, say, like the Fada Razor gets banned out, or we see the early roaming heroes for Jerax. I know uh, you and I were discussing, is it worth it to even ban out the Tusk as well as the Earth Spirit, which he plays both of them magnificently. But this time around, no Tusk. So it will be a change up. Um, with that, I guess we are just waiting on the teams to get set here. So... The game is currently paused, apparently. It's quite amazing, actually, I think, because they banned the Earth Spirit themselves because obviously Wings had first pick, and then the Tusk just went through the entire draft. Am I right? Yeah, I, I think they almost certainly would get it most games, but it was a first overall pick Chen, and it seems like Liquid had a plan to deal with any sort of jungler, at least Chen specifically, because they snap pick Darkseer Bounty Hunter just like that. I, I wonder if Jerax was like early on, there was some like chatting in the when we were eating, and a bunch of us were like, oh man, what, what's your third hero? You've just been playing these two heroes. <laughs> I wonder if he was like, I'm going to show these guys. <laughs> I got more heroes. I swear, I have <laughs> other heroes, guys. I ain't no Admiral Bulldog. Yeah. Come on now, give me a little credit. Because we all know that he's a great player and he can play other heroes, but it, it's just been such a long time since he played heroes that weren't those two that it's like, for me, it, personally, it's exciting to see him on a different hero. Yeah, Jerax has really come a long way. I mean, you look at the the Jerax story way back with, I think it was the Q-Pad Red Pandas. Was that where he... Yes. He yes, first yes. got noticed. And there were a couple games where I'm like, my God, this guy is making sick individual plays. And then they would be offset by like, you know, really questionable overextensions. You could see the inexperience, but he's come a long way since then. So. Yeah. No, he's, I mean, right now, it, I spe especially when he's on his Earth Spirits or he's on his task, I feel like he could be, you know, the most game affecting early game player in the whole tournament. Yeah, I... I would say probably the best roaming support yeah. right now, especially with Vici Gaming no longer really plays. We don't see like their dual roam, FY Fenrir, you know, buddy, buddy, let's link arms and just run around the map and kill people. So yeah. I think with their decline, as far as that style goes, he's emerged as the best roaming support right now. Absolutely. I definitely agree. No uh, pressure, Jerex. Nothing, nothing to live up to. Which, what, what was he going to be on in this, in this one? Was he the witch? No. Would he be... I'm trying to remember. They had the Witch Doctor, and... They had... Is there any way we can take a look at the heroes uh, while we wait? Roman? Yeah, because they, uh, they had Medusa and Razor. They had Dark Bounty Hunter. So bounty Hunter. Yeah, Bounty Hunter, Dark Seer. Is, is, would he play the Bounty Hunter since he's the Roman? I think he would play the Bounty, that most likely. I think I have seen Kuro play it before, yeah. but it does seem strange to switch it around when you know he's always doing the roaming. So I would most likely expect him on the Bounty. Not to say he can't play the Witch Doctor, but... Well, there, it'll be interesting to see, because he's... Uh, yeah, I, I pick him as the top Task or Earth. I mean, there's, there's people as good as Task or good as his Earth, but I, I feel like he's the best at the two combined, and... Yeah. Hero number three, Bounty Hunter. <laughs> Room around the map with that All one. right. He's expanding the repertoire. <laughs> yeah. No, they can still ban him out. <laughs> he's got to get at least three more on the list before they can no longer fully remove him from the draft. But uh, looking at the Wings draft on the flip side... Uh, 
I feel like a big storyline for this patch has become like, can you deal with Chen as a team? Because a lot of teams are prioritizing the hero. He's gone from maybe like second phase pick to first phase pick, now often first phase banned. It's a pretty big grab to the, and obviously Wayne's value it a lot. Um, I'm curious to see, is this actually effective? Because la when I cast, my last game I cast today was the EG versus Fnatic game, and EG got the early fear Enigma, uh, but similar in style to the Chen early on. You are going to focus on your own farm if you don't see gank opportunities, and they picked Bounty Hunter, they warded the jungle, they still could not shut him down at all. He had maybe like a minute slower farm than you otherwise would get, but the bounty also got nothing out of the laning stage, so... It's, it's a little bit different, right? Because the Enigma just has to shift to farm somewhere else, whereas the Chen, you expect to have the timing to like also apply pressure early on. Yeah, but the, with the new big camp, like, do you also ward that? Because I haven't seen anyone ward the offlane big camp. Yeah, that's the thing. So it's very difficult to completely shut out the jungle, yeah. but I, I think when you're against Chen, maybe your plan is not to just completely shut him out the jungle, just like... Make sure he can't affect the game early on, and then you've neutralized a lot of the effect of Chen. And right. I, I think that's probably doable. I think that's what Liquid would go for. And I'm going to be honest because I don't know how else. I, Wings are the one team in this tournament that I've watched. I, I just don't completely understand the way that they draft. And they're clearly a very good team. They clearly understand Dota a lot better than me. But I, I cast them playing against Vega, and I thought that they were totally outdrafted and they destroyed Vega. And the other games I've watched as watched. I, I can't figure out exactly the approach, and here again, like they bring out that, that last minute mid gyro. So I don't know if they just have like a totally different style of thinking about the game, but I feel like other teams I can usually at least figure out the general thinking, the, the plan. And Do you think we're going to see the, the homie missile max mid? I, well, <laughs> Winter would love that. I, don't know I actually imagine it's quite annoying for Razor, who just wants to constantly be running in and, and linking you. But Complexity around that. That's what I was chatting to Winter, Winter about it recently. They, they ran safe lane invoker mid gyrocopter, and it was like, shoot the rockets and then sunstrike. That, mm -hmm. that was their combo. But I don't know if there's, like, what's... <laughs> it's very gimmicky, though. Like, if yeah. you don't get a lot done, you can't really catch up from the jungle. Uh, you have way less single target burst in team fights, and I mean, obviously, if it comes to a larger scale engagement, you're very reliant on call down to get anything done. Yeah, I feel like they felt pressured into doing it, exactly as the panel said, based on the fact that they needed to pick another safe laner. Yeah. They, they had to pick up the slock. oh, well, Jarrah will have to be mid, and then we'll see what we do with that, kind of. What do you think about the, the Slark last pick? This is, I'd say this hero's been pretty unsuccessful overall the past couple months, especially in this patch. I haven't really seen many good Slark performances. Slark's meant to be a really uh, really strong hero when there aren't things to control it. And I don't think Liquid actually have anything. They, I mean, their supports are Witch Doctor and Bounty Hunter. They and they don't have that much AoE. They have, what, Darkseer, Razor is okay, not great. You can usually just pounce out of the static link. Um, and the Medusa. I mean, and, yeah. Okay, so her ulti is quite good. But I, I, most people, I think, think of Slark as being good against Medusa because you've got that kind of like pseudo mana burn. I mean, it's Yeah, you AoE, start taking her stats yeah. and she has a lower mana pool. So. Yeah. And you could also, he's very elusive, right? So if you can't lock him down, you just wait for the stone gaze, then you back away, you reset the fight, and then you go back in. I, I, honestly, I think the slot pick is very good. It's just a shame that they already had the gyrocopter, and so it, it makes the draft feel awkward to me. But again, I, I want to repeat, like, I just really don't understand the way this team's drafting, so there could be something I didn't see. In that Vega game, it, it all made sense after the game, <laughs> but before the game, I couldn't get it. Uh, Wings are, they're, they're smiling, they're excited, they're ready to go. They look pretty loose. Yeah, they they definitely relaxed. They don't look that tense. They, I mean, maybe they saw a good masseuse last night. I'll tell possible. you, man, it's cold here. You know, yeah. you need to need to loosen up a little bit every once in a while. Maybe they like the cold. hit the clubs in Minsk. I I like the cold actually. You, know? you do. I, I mean, in South do you, does Africa, it, does it get cold there? No, no. I mean, I, it was thirty eight degrees or something when I left. And then we got you and it was Ugh. like minus six or so. I'm talking about Celsius, right? Um, well, you came more prepared than Winter, who uh, <laughs> saw fit to bring a pair of flip-flops. And when you land in Minx, the plane actually, it lands on the tarmac. You pull up to the gate. You know, most airplanes, you have like the, the, full, the tunnel that comes out and directly brings you in. But no, you had to deboard the plane, walk on the tarmac, which was covered in snow. And he's doing it in flip-flops. So yeah. By comparison, you are very well prepared. Yeah, I, I think I was pretty well prepared. and I, enjoy, I, I went to New York last year. That was the first time I actually went to anywhere cold with snow and stuff. And I really enjoyed it. So this mm -hmm. time they told me it was going to be a bit colder. But it's, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it's a different kind of experience. You, it's like life-affirming when you have that. <laughs> life-affirming snow. <laughs> yeah, it is. You, everything, just you feel it more keenly. Exactly. I mean, I don't want to like stay out there yeah. forever, but just for a few minutes. Just. I, I think people who actually live in cold weather climates would uh, quickly disabuse <laughs> you of the notion that it's, it's something to be enjoyed or, you know, it's just suffering and you get through it by drinking lots of vodka. Yeah, I mean, 
that's 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 how people do it. That's certainly something I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> From going to college in New Hampshire, I could tell you that uh, there's a lot of drinking to get through the winter. Okay. At least in, uh, again, then again, it was college, but you know. Yeah. Well. College is college. Uh, Cold is suffering. Do you think there's any? That's that's the moral of my do, story. Do either of these teams have an advantage? Like, uh, are Liquid or or Wings more used to cold weather? It gets pretty cold in Shanghai, I think. I saw a lot of, a lot of complaints. Actually, uh, WCA was not in Shanghai. It was like more, in, it's a, was it Yin Chuan? I'm probably pronouncing Yinchuan, it wrong, think, but yeah. it's like a yeah. more isolated area. I think even up in the mountains, maybe. But it was really cold there. Apparently, it was in the negative as well. So and maybe they're they're well trained from that and ready to go. Where? Do you know where exactly Liquid stay? Um, Are they in a team house? No, I think they, they all live at home. Okay. So, you know, Fada, Kuroki in Germany, uh, Mind Control Bulgaria, uh, Matumba Man and Jerex from, it's what, Finland? Finland and somewhere somewhere in Europe. Is he Swedish? I, I think he might be. I'm not sure. But I have, either, I'm not any sure. Of those He's places, a European. Are any of those places extremely cold? I, Finland's pretty cold. Okay. So, yeah. So Jerax will maybe maybe that's why I'm saying he's like the best playmaking player in this tournament because he's used to the cold. That's then again, there's all the CIS teams. Who are <laughs> I I am still I am still totally down for Valve to just flip. You know, so if the majors don't work out, if they're a total bust by the end of the year, and they're like, you know what, we got to change things up. I was talking to Slacks about it. Let's just go full Survivor with this baby. You know, like no more. You know, players always complaining. They want you know the chairs to be ergonomic and the internet's got to be just so and 144 hertz monitors and the conditions have to be right. Don't put a camera in my face. Don't bother me with glare. Let's go the other way. Let's make the conditions as bad as possible for the players. So we'll have you know the Siberia major. We'll have the like the tropical jungle major. You got to fight your way through all kinds of poisonous creatures and. Maybe someone doesn't even come back. I just want a major where one person doesn't return. How about they don't even play Dota? They end up playing that... What's that mobile game that they had at that other... Do you remember there was a Chinese land that had like... Yeah. I think it was called Dota Legend. It's like based on Dota, but some kind of phone game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. Let's settle this over a rousing battle of Clash of Clans. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but Secret has a Clash of Clans team. Do they? Right? I think they have a Clash of Clans player now. I, I don't know anything about Secret except for the Dota team. Did, what, what, they I know they have some mobile game player on they, their roster they did o officially sponsored now they, they did start just as dota right or what, was they saying also yeah yeah they're okay. just dota okay they used to be all right we're taking a look here at our players which player do you think would be most likely not to make it back out of, out of these players or no just <laughs> like a general like any dota player um i don't know is there a player that's known for like being very demanding i think it would be bulba i yeah. i really think it would be bulba is that because he's a vegetarian? Like All me? right, so at the, at the viewing party for the summit, a uh, random fan comes up to him. He's like, hey, eat this. Bobo just ate it. He didn't ask what it was. <laughs> it turned out to be harmless. Just a nice fan, you know, just offering something to eat. But I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I don't think Bobo would last more than a couple of hours. I love him dearly. But Sam is uh, too trusting, I would say. So with that, we're underway, guys. It's Wings versus Liquid. Crucial match for Wings. Still pretty important for Liquid, but Wings need this win to have a chance. They are Radiant side, Liquid on the Dire. Yeah. Here we go. The game is there. We're going to see the... We're going to try and work out in the early game the plan for the, the mid lane Gyrocopter who we've been told by Winter is in China he's called Dagger, but around here we call him Blink. So apparently his name translates actually to Blink Dagger Dagger. Yeah, and apparently it should be Dagger if you're just going to abbreviate it, is what yeah. you were saying. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. But, but the whole tournament, we've been calling him Blink on the panel. I, I don't know what you want to go with in this game. I like. I want to call him Blink Dagger Dagger. That Blink sounds Dagger, awesome. Dagger. Okay. Good luck with that in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Blink Dagger Dagger jumps in with the Blink Dagger. <laughs> okay, it's going to get hard quickly. And it is Kuro on the bounty, actually. It's it's not actually going to be Jax. Because I remember seeing him play it. And he's going to take a bit of harassment here. Should be okay. But yeah, good call. Kuro will take over that roaming role. And that is a, a bit of a... Like, if you consider the fact that Liquid are so used to having um, Jerax playing that recently... Beforehand, actually, there was a stage where Kuro was playing a lot of roaming Quop and Bounty Hunter and stuff like that. And Jerax was kind of the lane support. So it won't be that... Oh, and Jerax is actually here with Kuro. They're both roaming. All right, here we go. This is the Chen counter, baby. It's the dual roam strat, the Bounty Hunter Witch Doctor. They, they have gone for the double big camp sentry drop, although it looks like the one sentry may not actually block it over to the south. There's a first blood bottom lane. On the off lane Medusa. This is 
not the expected lane matchups. Um, why? What? What's going on with the the Dusa off lane? Are, do you think they're just expecting the two supports to be able to make that lane easy for her by applying yeah, pressure in I the jungle? I guess so. I mean, Darkseer should do pretty well against Slaughter. That's for sure. I guess they're trying to avoid the Oracle versus Darkseer matchup at least uh, early yep. on. It seems like that's the most likely reason for it. That makes sense. But Medusa then needs to be careful when the supports aren't there. But then you're an off-lane Medusa. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and she's level one, so she doesn't even have a point in the shield yet. Yeah, but there's actually been a... In response to that, we see that Chen is actually on the other side of the map too. Going to try and help out the, the slaughter, put pressure on the Darkseer anyway. It's going to be very difficult for them to actually kill uh, the Darkseer. Ice Ice. Looks like he wants to make a move here in the top lane onto the Darkseer. Slardar in the area, but at the same time, the Gyrocopter also getting harassed heavily in the mid lane. Fada stealing tons of damage and has the move speed to run him down. One more auto tag. The Fada Razor up to his usual tricks, but maybe a trade from the Oracle. Oh, so close. Yet so far, Fada glides away on just a fraction of HP. I think someone on the panel said, I think it might have been Gods, that uh, Gyrocopter might be a way to deal with Razor because you use Rocket Barrage early on, you know, depending on your damage. But that's if you're fighting him. If the Razor's chasing you and linking you, like, Gyro's actually really weak in that situation. So I feel like the Gyro's options are, like, get away sooner or actually just fight into him. Well, this is, I think, the least effective start for a Chen we've seen in, in the tournament, actually. And a combination of the roaming, the Chen just getting scouted out as he rotates, and then not having a good gank target. Darkseer already level 2, you're not going to kill him easily with this combination, but they will smoke. And they've even sent in dust just in case they run into the bounty hunter, just to make sure that their smoke isn't wasted. This is so much space created though, meanwhile Darkseer is free farming the top lane, even if you get this kill. I feel like it almost has to be the Razor to be worth it. Just getting the bounty hunter, I would say Liquid are pretty happy with that. Well, Fada is actually oh, going into the river. Oh, Fada, low, in trouble. He takes the bait, but then he heads to the north. He may actually make it out of this one. Turning back for the Crusher Kuroki. They're not really being coordinated. Now the Gyrocopter on his own. He's going to commit towards Fada, who's stolen a lot of damage. The Rocket Barrage, will he get denied to the Ancients? No, they're going to grab the double. All right, well, that spoke gank was worth it, and Wings See, turn it into a 3-1. to one. But this is what I'm talking about when I say I don't really understand Wings, because they do this, like, out of nowhere. What, what was that play? But it works out, and... The, the Slardar level 2 offlane smoke at 3 minutes in, and now suddenly level 3. Yeah, really good stuff from them. Um, I, I think that the Chen took penitence for that. I think they he needed to level, yeah, so... Yeah, Winter's been... He's been a big penitence advocate here when he's been casting. Uh, it feels like it just makes it a lot easier to secure kills early on compared yeah, to the Test of Faith build. It got a pretty big buff recently, I think, so you can take that value points and get quite a lot of value out of it. To, uh, well, that's, that's why I call it value points. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be a pretty <laughs> shitty value point if you take it as a value point and don't get value out of it. This is some South African logic we got here. Yeah. They go make their move on to Fada. Oh, the damage overwhelming from the Oracle, rolling through the mid lane, as well as the Bounty Hunter. What looked like a great start for Liquid has quickly fallen apart. You know, I wonder if this is like deliberately part of Wings' thinking. Like, they draft in a way that's so like... <laughs> Like round the like, I'm sure Liquid are thinking just like us. Like, what is the what is the sense? What's going to happen? What are they going to try and do? And it's exactly the same thing I saw when Wings won their only game that they did win this tournament against Vega. I was really not sure about how their draft worked out, and then suddenly from the early game they were just making kills left, right, and center. They were, they're so chaotic in their movements and their play, and now we're going to see it again as they jump onto my control. They snare them up. They followed up with a quick crush. I mean, this this is just on. You you gotta have wards everywhere. You just don't know where they're gonna come. Suddenly, the Slark is rotated top. The Oracle journeyed from the bottom lane. Oh, ganks mid, secures the top brood, then ganks the top lane. The Slardar's already smoke gank with the Chen. Like this is musical lanes. And in spite of that, Liquid are farming a bit better on the cores, but doesn't seem like it's enough to fully make up for it. They've got a little CDC in them, don't you think? Like they oh that Korea. Needs a second hit, so he's not going to get it, but maybe... I feel like CDC, do, the, their roaming's different. It's a little more... Pro it's very effective, it's just more traditional. But you it's know, like, it's, it'll be like the gyro roams once he hits level 6. So it was the same formula for aggressive game after game, or, you know, if it's a strong ganking support, then he'll rotate. It's, uh, the similarity is the pace. When Kuro actually gets quite the rotation from the gyro from the mid lane, the slaughter from... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what lane... <laughs> what is going from. on here? <laughs> but <laughs> Pimp Muckle is being kept busy... <laughs> This game, that is for sure. I, for me, the similarity is that people said one of the most uh, advantageous things about CDC is that they play at a really high pace early on. And you don't get time to like figure out what they're doing. They, and, they keep you out of your comfort zone. And, and Wings are so... Like, that's been a talking point this tournament, that the team's doing the best, the ones playing in their, in their own comfort zones. So 
Wings, maybe there's something to be said for them. Even though they come into this this match uh, one for two, they, they're starting pretty well. At the same time, it is worth mentioning that the CS advantage is decent here for Liquid. So always not lost in that regard. And, and as a result, we see the net worth advantage relatively manageable, but it's more psychologically, it can get frustrating if you're Liquid and you're constantly getting ganked, pressured, and blown up in the early game. And now another smoke from Wayne. They are chewing through these no smokes for quite some time. As they make the rotation, Kuroki will be the one to reveal it, and he manages to crack it. So smoke will Someone fail. Someone has a dust. I, who has? Uh, oh, it's it's the Oracle. Okay. Because that's previously I thought it was really good when they smoked around for a gank. They had a dust in case it breaks, but. If you do that without the dust, the bounty hunter really gets in the way of the smoke rotations, and that's that's actually big value from Kuroki for sure. Yeah, he can continue to apply pressure here. Bottom is going to make his go onto Ice Ice as the Razor actually runs in, and looks like Chen's decide he's going to commit for this. They will get the Kuroki trade. They may also kill Afada. The little golems chasing him down, and he'll be okay, but forced to run away nonetheless as the Mystic Snake bounces all the way back to Matamba Man. He will retreat into the lane. Constantly extra heroes at the point of attack. The and there is a stone gaze, so Matumbo Man will be a tough kill. Have they overextended here? Call down comes out, it forces the TP. It's gonna bounce nicely. Very ineffective Mystic Snake there. And Wings will retreat. Chen barely surviving. Oh, still only level four at seven and a half, but it feels to me like the main casualty of this level of aggression is that they're not really getting their levels on that support. You know what? It, it, it actually is a common thread. I feel the game where I saw Wings beat Vega, it also involved a bunch of lane swapping. They laned in strange ways. We weren't really sure what they were going to do. And that's like, it's, I think, fundamental to how chaotic they are. Like, you just don't, you can't figure out what their system is. Um, I, I, I kind of agree with what you were saying earlier. Liquid are fine. They've got a lot of farm. It's not like Wings are destroying them. But coming from a context of like, we weren't really sure how Wings are going to play the early game. And now they got all these kills early on. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, and I'm curious to see if they can convert it into a strong mid-game. For now, Innocent Tiny back behind the tower. Very low on mana, but is trying to get his level 6 here. Matumba Man has been left to load, and he's the leader in CS. So an awfully Medusa gave up the first blood, but now probably the leader in net worth with that last hit as well. In fact, is above the Slark even. What's, the, what's our Slark building into? Because I feel like that's going to be quite a, a key factor in... Okay, we, we don't actually know Treads yet. Treads into Aquila, and then the question is, does he go for Shadow Blade, your Blink. Shadow Blade, your Blink Dagger? Does he try to get greedy into a Midas build? So I, th I think the Slark is going to be the key player for Wings as we go into the mid game. You're asking, are they going to convert? If Slark's going to get that value and just be like an absolute imminent threat all over the map, that's going to be a huge problem for Liquid. We did speak before at the start of the game. It's a good Slark game. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's just not enough to, to control him. Uh, well, there is a bit of a backstab brewing in the mid lane. The Courier... Kuroki, he had the scent, but couldn't close the gap in time. Looks like he was maybe going to drop another ward if he had any. No, nothing on him currently. And at the same time, Medusa posting up very aggressively in the bottom lane. And Toma Man just fearless at this point. He's got no backup, really. That's a long-range toss. We'll connect. The Slark's going to pounce. Mind Control now caught out. This would be a big kill, and it looks like they should be able to grab it with proper Chen Micro. Tries to turn with the wall. Shadow will live to tell the tale, and Ice Ice on the back of that will get himself quite a bit of additional gold. Man, these mad golems throwing rocks doing work all over the map this game. <laughs> like, it's actually like a... It's terrifying. I mean, wh when the golems became better, it, people mostly talked about Doom, because Chen wasn't really in the game then, but now that Chen's being picked again, like, we should go back to the fact that, you know, golems getting those spells is, is a pretty big Chen buff. Uh, lung cancer is coming soon for Wings with all the smoke that they've been consuming here as they again use up what I believe is their last smoke for 8 plus minutes in a sense. And they get caught out in the bottom lane and will end up going down. He does match the stair with Tumbleman who gets caught by a crush. Now the rocket brush coming in, pops the stick, tries to TP out and will end up dropping just barely there at the last second as the siege continues in earnest. Shadow in the top lane. Working on the tower, but it's a slow go for the Slark. Not the best at bringing these structures down at this stage. And that will secure them the Slardar Blink, which... I mean, we, you mentioned the, sl the Slark and how important his, his role will be in this game. And Slardar probably, to me, the one that can really catapult him into prominence as the, the main initiator and ganker for the team. It's also super yeah, impressive because this Slardar has basically been roaming. <laughs> like, <laughs> roaming Slardar since minute one. Dual roaming Slardar. Yeah, and he's gotten the Blink at a really good timing. How does he use it? Well, Smoke looks like they'll have one more soon. Actually available now. 
Yeah, that's one thing I definitely understand about this Wings team. They don't like to stop. In fact, when they, when they lost uh, against Virtus Pro yesterday, the game wasn't actually that... I mean, I don't think it was that one-sided, but they went into a fight which we thought, like, how could they possibly win the fight at the Rush Pit? And that's kind of how they play, almost like MVP Korean Dota style. Like, they, they want to just keep going into fight after fight. So I don't think I don't think it's gonna be a point where Wings like just okay let's sit back and farm a bit. Slaughter's got blink. I expect they go for the next kill soon. All right, I'll keep the play go ready just in case. Gyro does grab the drum, so it will be an early combat item for him. Let's see where Wings look to engage with aggression. They do have that smoke ready to go. Looks like they are gearing up for something. Just a little conga line down the river. A parade of Chen creeps with Faith Beyond close behind Innocence there as well. But this is going to be scouted and they just calmly march up as a pack. Yeah, now that Maintaining a good formation. <laughs> now that they're out of smokes, it's a lot less subtle. I th they had one more in this, in this shop. I'm not sure if they actually bought it. No. Yeah, did not buy it yet. Maybe they're deciding they need to chill. Save something for later. Curl though, there's the bleak reveal. I think they actually had already seen it from the ward, but... Yeah, in the end, he will go, go down. And Kuro's not quite level 6 yet either, so... That's going to be another important marker for Liquid. I think if they get him to level 6, get a few tracks, it takes maybe one fight and Liquid are Radiant's looking healthy. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely the timing where wings get really scary, and they're going to try to abuse it now. The cooldown comes through, Cask will bounce, but... Fada needs to TP away very quickly and does make it home on just a sliver of HP. Not so lucky will be Jerex. A secondary crush finishes him off. But now Medusa gets into the fight. Tries to go on Ice Ice out of mana though. Follow up amp damage. Centaur stun very nicely microed here by Ice Ice. Edisids, maybe the trade stays alive for now. Does drop in the end though as they overwhelm him with a bit of additional burst damage. And onto mind control they go. Laying into him. Rocket Barrage going to work. Turns with the wall. Tries to man fight this, but there's too many Ched creeps. He will end up falling. Gets the trade. Kuro may get something here as well. Track now online. Just barely able to stay in rage. Get the kill. And then the turn back the other direction. Get that little yellow goblin. Can they do it? One last swing from the mud golem finishes the job. Chaos everywhere erupts, and Slark says, great, I'm just going to farm top lane. I think Kuro must have got like over a thousand gold in that fight. Like, denied. he got he got so rich. Yeah, he got like 900 gold. So... The rest of the team, not so much. Yeah, I don't know, like, what's the item the bounty hunter buys to get... He just bought a bunch of wards. I still think that's a huge win for Wayne's, though, because Shadow wasn't even there. They were farming the whole time. Now he's got a Shadow Blade. And that was basically a 4v5. Yep. Absolutely. Like, if, if that 1,000 gold goes to Razor or Medusa or Darkseer, maybe it's a different story. But th that's exactly my point. The bounty hunter doesn't have some, like, impact item that suddenly is going to change things around. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. Now, I guess the question becomes, with the Shadow Blade, who's your target if you're the Slark? Who are you looking to kill? Um, I guess whoever you find. He's found Medusa. I'm is, not is sure that's, kill, that's not a kill, is it? Is it? Maybe it is. Jumps on him, forces up the Stone Gaze, and then just walks away. Well, Stone Gaze down. That's still quite good for basically zero investment from Shadow. The, the biggest deal about this lock is that it extends the dynamic now, where Liquid are like struggling to read Wings' movement, and it's so chaotic. They could be anywhere, they could threaten us, and Liquid have to be more and more afraid, I think, as they farm. Jarex trying to eke a little farm out of this Radiant Jungle, and Chen marches in, but he walks into a Death Ward as well as a wall, but the turn crush comes, Faith Beyond trying to spin this one on its head, then the Oracle arrives, looks to keep the team alive a bit longer, follow up Amp on the Mind Control, they're going to lose him as well, that's three down for only a Chen, not worth it, not worth it at all, and again, they're taking these fights without Slark, who's split pushing, and now up to 7,000 net worth, so not only applying pressure, but also out farming them, this is... It is that just brand of chaotic Dota that Wings play their best at. And, you know, looking at Liquid over the past couple of months, they have mostly played, I would call it very, like, you know, stereotypical Chinese Dota in a way, even though they're a European team where it's very organized. They don't take too many unnecessary risks. They hit their timings. Uh, a little bit predictable, but they just win through execution more than anything. But Wings is just not letting them get into their comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. Liquid have had a careful approach, and they're, they're not even being allowed to, to play carefully in this game. I still do think that if they take a big fight with a few tracks, their draft puts them in a great position. Oh, but, yeah. But at this point, I'm ready to say that it's not just Wings having lots of kills. Wings, wings are ahead, very clearly. Yeah, if it was if it was just kills before, that has changed. That that equation has changed Dyer's since. Bottom tower is under attack. Do they have the the Chen doesn't have mech yet, right? Doxia has his. So uh, Chen mech very close, I believe. Yeah, six hundred gold or so to go. So that's maybe one difference maker that the Doxia gets the mech first. So if if they get into a fight sometime soon, it might be a, an important window in the game. 
Unfortunately for him, it is a pretty short window with only, you know, probably a wave or two of creeps to go. And we've seen that there, there are more smokes. There's a smoke that's on the chin. Actually, smoke just gets bought on Witch Doctor as well. But with the tracks up, it's going to be much more difficult now for Wings to make those smoke plays. Kuroki is on the move here, has a DD rune. He's going to scout out Ice Ice. Not sure that's a solo kill. There's a Hand of God available, and oh, hello, buddy. Looks like he is popping the dust now. Slardar's there in time. Oh, this hurts. Kuroki, he had the DD rune. He was looking for a big play. Instead, it is a big feed, and that will pretty much secure the mech. Mind Control on the way out. Does get snared just on the boundary of the call down. The backpack for Mind Control, but both call down procs will hit as the rocket follows him through the trees. Around and around he goes, but finished off by the Oracle. 20 to 7. And meanwhile, top lane looks like Slark wants to make a jump. Pouncing onto Matumba Man. There is no mana for a stone gaze. He pop oh, he doesn't even have the mana with the stick. Shadow could maybe go for this one. Oh, popping the ult now. Needs to find him. Dark, Dark Pact is there. Just smack him once more. Gets him with the dagger. Unfortunately, that mana management, a bit too tricky. We'll end up dropping. I gotta say, like, grats to Slaughter so far this game. For me, the MVP so far of the game. He's just like, out of complete adversity in an impossible lane, started roaming right at the beginning, and he's just been fight like getting the exact right crashes at the right times, catching Kuro a few times, saving teammates with a double crash in, in his own jungle. I, I, it's almost a perfect Slaughter game for me so far. Meanwhile, top lane, Shadow. Just aggressively farming, knowing that's a, that's a big concern for Liquid. Dark to board four stuff. Whoa! He is he gonna push his rocket? He's got max rocket. Is that the plan? Uh, Are we gonna actually I see guess. that? <laughs> Have you ever seen that happen in a? Not in a serious match. <laughs> I mean, I've I've played pubs where we all buy four stabs and just shove it into them right away. But I mean, he's bought it. That's there's no. Other that's the only reason to get it, right? There's not like there's no clockwork here. There's not even a great chasing and he's, hero. And he's maxed the rocket. It's yeah. It's. Absolutely, I. I guess that's the play. I, our observer needs to see the four staffing rocket, please. That's, this is like the most important thing in the game. Yeah, forget about that courier death. <laughs> Come on, Pimp Muckle, get your shit together. <laughs> I think I threw him off. I think that's my fault. But it's, uh, I just want to see. I like. I, I haven't even. I don't even know what it looks like. I haven't seen it in a pub. Like, what does it? Does it look like the normal rocket animation or like? It just like shoves. It literally just shoves it forward. All right. And they're gonna have a four stop soon on the slot out too, so if they really want to do the <laughs> the mass force. Oh, stop. and the oh, this is sweet. Look at that. You've got the, the arcade room now as well. So you can spam shove rockets. Yeah, spam the shoving, spam the rockets. This is gonna be good stuff. It's mind control in trouble, he's gonna TP out. There's nothing to yeah, he's okay. I mean, is this where you double down, grab a veil, you know, maybe even go for that classic Aghanim Scepter gyrocopter? Oh, there we go, Slaughter catches again and Kuro's dead again. I almost feel like this is the, my team's got this in the bag build, so I'm just going to build a fun item. But uh, that is, uh, having not seen it just yet, is Shadow engages into the jungle, almost finds himself a Darkseer kill. Again, the pressure mounting. I don't know, our mistake is to try and like understand what Wings are doing. They're just like... Our mistake is to try to understand Wings. Yeah, they're just so next level. They like think in a totally different way. And are you saying they are actually aliens? I, I don't know if I'd go with that. Um, <laughs> But they're very good at Dota. But if one Dota team was al actually aliens, Wings might be atop the list. Yeah, it's possible. With the strangeness of some of their builds. You know, they actually got unlucky to... Well, it depends how you see luck. Like, they didn't make it out of the groups in the Shanghai qualifier. But if it was the old point system with three points for a win... They would have, They would have. Yeah. So. Man, Shadow just one-man wrecking crew at this point. He got tons of space early, and now he's able to punish all over the map. Gyro just casually skating about 2,500 gold picked up. What's it going to be? Uh, does he go for like, I don't know, is it is it Ags? Is it, is it like... Uh, Veil. I think it's Veil if you just want to really take advantage of your, your nuke damage. Uh, yes, the Force Staff <laughs> Rapier build. I am sure that's definitely the item. Yeah, I, I wish... Do you, do you remember in Dota 1, end of game uh, scorecard, you could see like how many times each hero killed each other hero? Yeah. I, w I would love to know like how many times Slaughter's killed Bounty Hunter this game. I feel I like he's been there every time. That, the Blink Dagger reveal was there, and in fact, they're going to run right into Kuro again, and right away, down he goes. As we say it, Slaughter kills Bounty. And it's just, I, I feel like Kuro must be so sick of the Slaughter, but honestly, this Slaughter has been amazing. Incredible. It's the best Slaughter I've seen this patch, for sure. How many slaughters have there been this patch? It's yeah. definitely fallen off a lot. Absolutely. But but not for wings. No. Because they got their own meta and they're making it work. 
And for those wondering, guys, they are building the stage in the arena right now. No, nobody is uh, up to shenanigans here in the casting booth. That is a hammer. Stage is under construction. It looks pretty cool, actually. I'm, I'm excited to see the big show tomorrow. Yeah, it looks really cool. Wings on. Oh, he wants to go in. Shadow's giving him a bit of vision. It's going to fight Jack. Ah, uh, you jinxed him. Knoxville would be very disappointed in you. I mean... You talked him up. He missed one stomp. He's he's still MVP for me. I, I, I don't know, Skin. I think he is. <laughs> I think this is the South African curse in play. It could be. I mean, I don't know. If Honestly, this is like, if I if after the game, if Wings win this game and after the game I, I go see them and I, I know which player Slaughter was, I'm going to give them you a big You just hand give him a hug? Yeah, a hug. Like, <laughs> Can I just shake your head? I'll never wash it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask him for his autograph. Okay. That's... They're going to make a move back on mid here Jacob momentarily. Jacobson went back for the Asher. So, back to more sort of standard. Oh, I was hoping he would double down. But you see it's no half measures. It's that unpredictability. You just never know. He he really does keep you on your toes. <laughs> and another arcane rune. So at this point, uh, how do you see Liquid potentially getting back at this game, if they're going to? What's the play? It's it's not maybe two fights. Early on in the whole time, I was saying one big fight with Trax because they have Medusa, and they have Razor and Dark, so they have they have better late game, and they just need to like close the gold deficit. And I, th I think one fight with Trax is, is not enough at this point, so it's probably two fights with Trax. But usually what happens in that situation is if you win a big fight, turn, uh, turn around the dynamic, it actually helps you to win the next one. Um, Would you go so far as to say it's all a part of the plan no. for Kuroki and, and no, friends? No, it's, it's definitely not part of the plan. I'll tell you why, because they need to win a fight, and I can't tell you how they're going to win the fight. Okay, I mean, I don't know if you have an idea, but... Is it the Darkseer vacuum into... It feels like, yeah, they need the big wombo combo. Or, yeah. Like, vac wall, Dusa gets off the ult, Stone gazes a few heroes with the Death Ward going the whole time, and the Razor's right-clicking. Their lineup is really strong around the Dusa ult, potentially, but in practice, then, you've got all these defensive force stabs. I mean, we're talking about the missile. We have yet to actually see that come into play. Um, the Chen saves, the Oracle saves, the Slark's naturally just almost impossible to kill, so... I feel like they need that combo, but if played properly, Wayne should not be giving it to them. Where's Slark? Can we see what Slark's doing? Okay, he killed a sentry. He's got a gem. Yeah. All right, so uh, that one's not on Pimp Muckle. We take full responsibility. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that's on me. But Slark is actually going for kills now. And He's going to force out the Deuce and then Faith Beyond again with the crush. Even McGrath just to grab mind control through this. Fada forced to commit the BKB. Can he at least get the Slaughter kill? No, the mech comes out. Now they look to turn it around. Gyrocopter getting really aggressive here. And we'll bring him down. That's two out of the picture. The crush forward. Mind control again getting pummeled by rockets. Three down. No buybacks available. No Razor BKB. No Razor ultimate. This is looking dire. Seems like Kuroki tried to slow the wave down a little bit, but they are going to be knocking on the front door now. And this is, yeah, this is not our liquid win a big fight. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like that. <laughs> not the optimal engagement. I mean, again, it's the Slark who just constantly forces out the Dusa old and big cooldowns from Liquid. And the Slardar who just comes in and eh, another two hero crush. No biggie. Nothing to see here. Just another regular day in the life of Faith Beyond who won't find the additional bounty hunter kill but has thoroughly beaten down Liquid. Their base is in shambles. Now the fields are being salted. Your family members carried off. Wings yeah. are taking over. I don't know if I want to be that guy, but I, I think this game is like very, very close to over. I don't know if like, there's been a lot of teams in this tournament that like when the first Raxes go down, they just call GG. I don't know if Liquid's that kind of team. And like they do have late game, so maybe they want to give it another go. But there's not even going to be a do salty when she spawns. Wings do not want there to be a late game. <laughs> On the other side, they continue the push on the mid lane. The whole combo is about to be up. They've got 10 seconds on the Dusa. And Wings decide to slow roll it. So that big team fight that maybe Liquid was banking on, if it's going to happen, it won't be in their base. Yeah, so I guess they don't mind the fact that Liquid can like get the cooldowns, get their heroes up, because they're going to get a whole bunch of new items. Like There's going to be a new round of items on Wings next time they push. I don't know what Slark's going for, but he has a lot of gold there. Hmm... Is the Abyssal Blade, is that the... Abyssal Blade? Yeah, I, I mean, I think at this point he can man fight pretty effectively. Slaughter's got Yules. Uh, I mean, I'm probably the biggest one of all. <laughs> That's funny, but uh, probably the biggest one of all here is the Chen Egg. So now they've got the extra buffer of creeps to try and finish out the game. And Jara's back to the Demon Edge, so 
back to the more standard build. The four step was just kind of in between. A casual four step. I, I actually, I don't think we've seen one time where the four step has done anything for him, but it's a cool idea. It's cool to have a mobility item on any carry, to be honest. Yeah. So, and Jara's never really buy like Shadow Blade or Blink, so if you can justify it, like, I'd like to see it in another game where like, they're not already dominating when he buys it. They are going to march in now. Shadow working on the tier 3 tower, looking to break open this liquid base and put them out of their misery. Because aside from that first couple of minutes, it has been misery for them from start to finish. Very one-sided for Wings here. The Chen army marches in. Missiles constantly harassing Thada. And it, it does really seem like the missiles have been the biggest issue for the Razor. Yeah, he's got BKB, but unless he's willing to commit it, Constantly kept out of the fight. They get another homie missile on the Matum Man. Then the crush comes out. Only connecting on my control, but it forces out a Fada BKB. A shadow jumps forward, lunges in, kills off the Bulgarian, looking for more now. Jerex on the retreat. Fada is at least going to force Shadow away, but he's still holding Aegis here. He's still got the gem. 5,300 gold up. They may actually defend the base, but it costs them heavily in terms of buybacks. And again, Faith Beyond with the Blakes, the crushes, and even the Dusa all committed. Now the Yule Scepter on the Slardar. Kenny Blake himself out after this. The four step out. Gyrocopter to the rescue. And he is going to save the day, and Shadow's back in for round two. The feeding frenzy continues in earnest. Liquid are toast at this point. Three more dead, and that's at least one die back that's there, I do the believe. And there's the GG. Absolutely brutalized here. Yeah, and I'm not even going to try and tell you what happened this game or how Wings won it, because that's just, you know, the, the, I think it's appropriate to trip in tribute to Wings just to, to not really have a, a proper understanding of what their approach was, what their overall plan was from the start. They made it work. They had these fast movements from the beginning, made lots of kills, collected momentum, never, ever lost it. And this asks questions of secret, I think, because secret were the team that, you, other, other than Liquid and, and Virtus Pro in this group, who were hoping to sneak into that third slot, and they still have to play Wings later. That that was that was just ugly, man. I I honestly think at this point that looking at Wayne's, you just don't know what you're gonna get from game to game. They have to be like the most not only unpredictable in terms of play, but just un unpredictable in terms of performance. Like, are you gonna get the Wayne's that gets rolled over and just slaughtered in 20 minutes, or the Wayne's that does the slaughtering? It's really hard to say. It's really scary if your team's secret for me. I, I honestly, I feel like they could easily take a game off of Secret. Sure, maybe in a best of three or a bigger stage with more preparation, you give Secret the edge there, but this is BO1s, and it, Wayne's have shown that they can take a game off of anyone, whether it's these teams or even in the past in China, they've taken games off of some of the top teams before, so this group is its totally up in the air right I'm, now. I'm me. a Wings fan. I'm a... I'm a what, Bian is his nickname, the slaughter player. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I've been saying I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to try to find him and get his autograph. All right. Well, unfortunately, there was not enough water to cool off the painful taste of the spicy hot wings. Wings prevail here. We're going to go to a break, guys. When we come back, Starlighter Group B action will continue. He's Scant. I'm LD. Stay tuned. E-Gaming Bets. We accept bets on computer games online since